Good morning, Pioneer. It is a delight to worship with you this morning, to invite you to bring your lives, your worship, your prayers before God. If you have not already, I encourage you to get a candle, light it as a sign of our unity together, even though we are separated by many miles. Let us light a candle to show that the Spirit is among us to bind us together. We are one family, one family with the whole church of God. Also light that candle as a sign of God's presence with us. For God meets us in this place. God meets us in our homes, wherever it is that we are worshiping this day. God is there with us. So we give thanks that our prayers and our praise today is heard by a God who loves us dearly. Let us join together in word and spirit as we give our worship to God. For this truly is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glor God of glory thunders. Ascribe, Ascribe to, to the Lord, Lord the, glory the glory of God's name. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. Worship, Worship the, the Almighty, Almighty in, in holy splendor. splendor. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness and causes the oaks to whirl. The, the voice, voice of the Lord, Lord is powerful. powerful. May, May God, God speak peace, peace, peace to God's people. prayer. God of redemption and new life, as we remember today how Jesus was baptized and claimed by you, help us also to remember our own baptisms. We were claimed by you in the same way, called to be your beloved children. As we prepare to worship this morning, remind us that your grace abounds. 
Renew us with the Holy Spirit and prepare us to go forth boldly, remembering the baptismal promises that we made and eager to share the new life we have found with those around us. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just as Jesus came to John the Baptizer to be baptized in a baptism of repentance, so we too now come before Christ, come before our Lord to repent, to repent of the, the ways in which we have turned aside from God's ways, to repent of the ways which we have caused pain to our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, and we trust that God meets us in this place. That God knows our sins through and through. God knows us better than we know ourselves. And has already chosen forgiveness and love. So we lay our confession before God. And that confession becomes a thanksgiving. For we are reminded again and again of how much God has done for us in Jesus Christ. So let us lay our confession before our Lord. God of mercy, you sent your Son, Jesus, to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way, making idols of your good gifts. We have idolized our nation. Lord, forgive our idolatry and teach us to love our nation. We have idolized our possessions. Lord, forgive our idolatry and teach us to use our resources for your kingdom. We have idolized women and men. Lord, forgive our idolatry and teach us to humbly love as brother and sister. It seems, O oh Lord, like we turn anywhere but you until you tear down our idols. Help us, merciful God to turn to you first and always, for you are truly our hope and our life. Brothers and sisters, God has proved his amazing love for us. For even while we were sinners, while we were rebelling against him, while we bore that rebellion in our hearts, God came to us in Jesus Christ, continues to come to us in the Holy Spirit, to bind us to Christ, for Christ came and died to put our sins to death, to put death itself to death. Christ was risen from the grave so that we could be reminded, so that we would know that God's work for us and God's will for us was life eternal. Christ sent the Holy Spirit among us that we might always have his presence with us, that we might always have God's power, God's guidance and comfort. And Christ prays for us each and every day, lifting us before the Father, washed clean, healed, made whole as good and faithful servants. 
believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, we we are are forgiven. forgiven. Let us sing that gratitude that we bear through the glory to God. to all my young friends. I hope you're doing well this morning, and I hope you were listening to the Bible story that was just read, Uh, because we're going to talk about that for a couple of minutes together. I want to talk to you especially about water. Think for a couple of minutes. What, What does water do? Is water something that's important, or could we do without water? How do we see water? How do we use water? comes to us in rain, we find it in rivers and lakes and streams, we need it to drink and to grow the plants that make the food we eat, Uh, animals need it to survive, water is really crucial and central to our lives. And interestingly enough, water is also really central to the stories in the Bible. I'm sure you guys know a lot of Bible stories, if you would think about it for a minute, that have water in them. Right in the beginning, when God is creating the world, God starts by separating the waters. And then you know the story of Noah, I'm sure, and the great flood that came. And you've learned about Moses. Moses' life is full of water. It begins with him being placed in a basket on the water to be found and rescued so that he won't be killed. And then when he leads the Israelites out of Egypt, God divides the waters of the Red Sea for them to pass through. And then they're in a desert and desperate for water. And Moses strikes a rock and God sends water for them to drink to keep them alive. Water shows up in the Psalms. In the songs that are written in the Bible, one of the ones that you guys are likely to know is the 23rd Psalm that a lot of people recite. It says, God leads me beside the still waters. So our story this morning is also about water. Jesus goes down to the water to be baptized. Baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Lots of people were doing it. John the baptizer was talking about repentance, turning away from your sins, but he also talked about that someone greater than him was coming who was going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus goes down to be baptized, something like a dove comes down from heaven, and God says, this is my child, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Now, at that point, Jesus hadn't done any great miracles yet, was not out preaching and teaching yet. This is the very beginning of the story of Jesus' ministry. And in fact, it's the very beginning of the book of Mark. That's one of the Gospels that tells the story of Jesus' life. And while the other Gospels start with Jesus as a baby, for Mark, this is the starting point. This is where God proclaims Jesus as his child, And Jesus' ministry begins. And it's really cool because the story of the water doesn't stop there. Jesus gives the directions to his disciples to go out and continue baptizing. And to this day, we baptize. We use water as a reminder that just like Jesus was God's own child, we are also children of God. Many of you have probably been baptized, and you may have a reminder. We've done at various points reminders reminders of our baptisms, and you might have a little stone that you took from the baptismal font. Whether or not you have a reminder, the water of baptism means that God loves us as children. 
And just like Jesus hadn't really done anything to earn it at that point, God said to Jesus, I'm well pleased with you. And God says to us, I'm well pleased with you, my child. God loves you. And I want you this week, whenever you see water, and I think you'll be surprised with how often you see water, I want you to remember that God loves you and that you are God's child. And that the water is a reminder of the great story that continues, that started with creation and continued through Jesus' life and continued in us today, that God loves us and cares for us always. Will you pray with me? Dear God, water is so central to all of our lives in the same way that you are. Help us to remember that we are your beloved children, that you care for us and are with us always. And when we need a reminder, let us look at the water and see you there as you bless and love us with the same constancy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. Our scripture lesson today comes from Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. Hear the word of the Lord. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's powerful, the word of the Lord. It's powerful what God can do when he speaks. God speaks, let there be light, and there's light. God created in the beginning, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of formlessness and void. It's not an empty void, by the way. And we can tell because God's, this wind from God also uh, translated the spirit of God. God's spirit is moving along the waters. The waters are violent. They are formless. They are chaotic. That word formless void is one of my favorite Hebrew phrases, tohu vabohu. It's mishmash, it's chaos, it's, it's helter-skelter. It's formless, it's chaotic, and it's empty of meaning, empty of life, except for God moving over the waters. There's an anticipation among uh, th that is present in this passage. There's there's this 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 moment of God's about to do something in this chaos. We all know chaos right now. We're all distinctly aware of violence and chaos of formless voids that we do not know what to do with. So where is God? Where is God amongst the rage that, that has boiled over in our nation? Where is God over the rage that boils in our own hearts? Because I'll be honest, my heart is a chaos right now and it is formless and it's, it's seeking for some order and understanding. I don't understand. I don't get it, and I'm weary from trying.
But God is there. God is hovering right above us, right among us. And God can bring light to the darkness. In fact, I would say that light, God is bringing light to the darkness. God, God is always bringing light to the darkness. But there's, there's something very different about creation and about the chaos that, that was in the beginning and about the chaos which is in our hearts and in our culture and in our nation. And this is revealed in our baptism and in Christ's baptism. You see, the chaos of the world, the chaos of, of that beginning creation was of God's own making. God says, uh, in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, when God made all of this stuff, it was formless, and then God made order out of it. And this is, this is outlined in six days of creation, very well ordered, very very distinct in how each step is done. There's light and there's darkness. God separates the light and the darkness. The light is not the same as the darkness, and so God separates them. How I wish it were so easy in my own heart to separate the light and the darkness. And yet God is doing that. God speaks to each one of us and separates the light from the darkness. The darkness has a place. And it's right here. And the light has a place. And that is with God. God creates, separates the waters from the waters and creates the sky and the seas. God separates the, or sorry, gathers the seas together and has the land uh, rise up out of the, the waters. And then God goes about uh, filling these realms of creation he has, he has created. The light and the darkness he fills with the stars, the sun, and the moon. The sky he fills with birds. The sea he fills with fish. The land he fills with all manner of animals. And then he creates something new. Something, he says, is in God's own image. Something that has responsibility. Something that can have dominion over all these things that God has created. God created us to, to have dominion. To be able to care for all that is here, including each other. God created us to have our own will. And so, God creating order out of the chaos in our own hearts is a little bit different. When John the baptizer was preaching repentance, Jesus came. Jesus, the one without sin, the one that had no sin to repent of, came to that baptism for John to baptize him. Why? Why would Jesus, this, this sinless man, come before, before John? In other Gospels, John even asks him this exact question. <laughs> this isn't the way it should be. Jesus says, let it be so for now. You see... God is more than capable and more than willing and even eager to create order out of the chaos. But for, for us, for humans, God does not coerce. For God created us to have dominion. God's word is powerful and God is, is speaking to us his amazing love for us each and every day. God is creating order and, and speaking our, our destiny and our, our belovedness over and over and over again. When Jesus comes up out of the water, God says, You are my son, the beloved one. In you I'm well pleased. The word that, that created the universe speaks something that, that is true. And that, 
And our baptism now, the baptism that we celebrate, binds us with that identity, binds us with this, with this one who came into the world, and we re what is revealed is that God's declaration of belovedness then extends to us. We are God's beloved. And yet there is some, there is, there's something that we do here. There's, there's an openness that we have to surrender. We give ourselves and we open ourselves to God's word. We allow God to, to enter into our lives. We allow this spirit that descended upon Jesus, the spirit that, that hovered over the waters of creation, that spirit comes into our lives to speak the truth to separate the light from the darkness. Problem is, we hold so tightly. We hold so tightly onto our ideas. This is what is right. I know what's right. Er, it's mine. And when those things get threatened, the anger in our hearts turns to violence. We've got to release. We've got to let go. We've got to let God's spirit move in us. The angers that we bear aren't wrong, by the way. Paul says, go ahead and be angry, but don't sin. Jesus got angry. He even got a little violent. He went into the temple overturning tables with a whip. <laughs> They had turned God's house into a place of oppression, a place where, where the poor were being taken advantage of. What we have today is very different. The anger in our hearts we need to deal with. I sent out uh, a letter and a video message that talked about that anger earlier this week. I encourage you to go watch it if you haven't already. And I haven't specifically been criticized, but I've seen some criticism of that kind of message. We, need, we all need to get along sorts of messages. But let me tell you, dealing with our anger and listening to each other and seeking peace is not a cowardly move, it is a very bold move. It's a way of recognizing our own weakness. It's a way of recognizing that we don't have all of the answers and there, is, there are principles and there are values that we don't get, that we haven't taken into consideration that we need to listen to our neighbors, our brothers and sisters who are also angry and hurt for other reasons entirely. Maybe those reasons are correct. Maybe they're wrong. Maybe they're based on truth. Maybe they're based on lies. We're never, ever going to be able to get through and join together as a nation, as a church, as, as a body of humans if we cannot join with those who we do not understand to listen, to seek understanding, that doesn't mean that we agree necessarily. But we seek to understand. It's amazing how much anger can be diffused by just listening, not agreeing, just seeking understanding. It is a loving move. And as a loving move, it is a bold move to listen to your neighbor. To reserve judgment. I am angry. I'm, I'm enraged. I'm enraged that people would flood our capital with violence. I'm enraged at the lies that I perceive.
That rage, I feel, is natural. But that rage cannot sit here. And it cannot, it cannot fester. It needs to, to, to find healthy outlets and then find healing. It needs to. It needs to all across our nation. All across our church. Because I'll tell you something, there are divisions within our church that have not been healed. There are divisions in our church which are widespread and have been deeply rooted for generations. And we have not listened to come together as one church. Our church does not reflect the kingdom of God. It is still incredibly segregated. The kingdom of God is not segregated. It continues to be divided by political lines. The kingdom of God is not divided by political lines. The church continues to be separated by economic class. There's poor churches and rich churches. The kingdom of God has no interest in poor or rich except to lift up those who are hurting and humble those who are proud. There is much of which we must repent. That we too can enter the waters of repentance. Bury our sins with Christ. Ourselves buried with Christ. That we might rise up out of the waters. Made new. With new life and new hope where all the worldly divisions have been put to death. And we hear God say, you are my child. You are beloved. And in you I am well pleased. Come enter in with your brothers and sisters of all shapes and sizes and colors and creeds. Come enter in. I've prepared a place for you. There is a place for you in my kingdom. Alongside those whom you have called enemies. This is why, this is why Jesus lifts up the love of enemies in total disagreement with our inclinations. Love your enemies. Bless them and do not curse. It's for exactly such a time as this that we turn to God. Turn away from our political ideologies. Turn away from those weapons of right and wrong that we have received from this world. But lay them down. Lay them down, beat them into plowshares. For we do not wield weapons of war, we do not wield weapons of violence, we wield God's love. And it is God's love that is powerful in this world to make change. Because God's love makes change first, right here. So come to the waters of repentance. Open your lives to let the Holy Spirit in. For God will create order out of this chaos. If we are willing. If we submit and surrender. If we live by the Christ who has come into this world to show redemption. It is in his name that we pray all these things. Amen. Now let us proclaim the faith that we have received from our fathers and mothers. Let us proclaim the faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have received this amazing grace from our Lord, and so we also give. We give of our lives, of our time, of our hearts. We give of our resources that God's kingdom might be great in this place and that God's kingdom might flow out from this place to, to flow into the world and heal the, the divisions of this world. I encourage you to consider in your own hearts the ways that God calls you to give this day. You can give by clicking on the donate links on the Facebook page. In the, I'm not sure it made it into the bulletin, to be honest. Um, or you can go to our website and click it there. But let us consider these things as we sing our, uh, as we listen to or sing along with our anthem, Great Are You, Lord.
As we have received this amazing love from our Lord, as we have received this new life, we come together as one community, one body. We are one body of faith, one church. And so we lean on one another, we rejoice with those who rejoice, we mourn with those who mourn, we support those in need, and lift up those who are downtrodden. And so I invite you to enter into prayer this day as we, uh, as we pray for our community, for our church, for our nation. Uh, one prayer request or, or prayer update that I'd like to give is uh, Benjamin Irwin had some good news. His tumor is stable from his last MRI. So that's very good news for him. Um, but continue to pray for him as, he's, uh, as, as his journey is not over. He does have a new doctor but, uh, but continue to pray for he and Suzanne as they continue this battle, that they would have strength and that God would uh, provide miraculous healing for him. Let us pray. Lord, you, you call sinners to be your own. Lord, we open our lives to you and lay our sins before you, for you are the only one that can deal with them. You are the only one that can create order out of our chaos, the chaos in our own hearts. You are the only one that can bring healing to a hurting world. Lord, help us, each and every one of us, to open our lives to you. That we might that we might open those dark places of our lives, that you can shine your light and separate for us what we could not separate ourselves. Take the darkness from our lives and from our hearts. Bring peace to your people. Lord, we give you thanks for the ways that you are working, for the ways that you are tearing down our idols that we falsely lean upon, for, Lord, as you tear down those false idols, we lean on you. Lord, we give you thanks for the ways that you have moved in Benjamin's life. We give you thanks for, for uh, walking with him through the hospital and through uh, the pain. Lord, continue to walk with him and through him. Lord, shine in each one of our hearts that we might be your testimony of peace in this world. Lord, shine through the ways in which we work in this world and act in this world that your people might come together, people of all stripes, people of all ideas, but let us share those ideas lovingly and without judgment, but with discerning hearts and with wisdom. Lord, move in our capital. Move amongst our leaders that they would all have humble hearts. That they would let go of the personal ambitions, whether, whether in opportunist, opportunistic ways to gain political power from uh, the hurt that our country is facing, or whether an unjust... Uh, in unjust ways, those who would deceive our people. Lord, enter into every heart. Take down the pedestals that we build up for each other, the pedestals that we build up for things that do not belong on pedestals. Help us to turn to you that we can lift up the only name that really matters. Your name, the one who saves us, the one who gives life, who brings life to that which was dead, who brings light to that which was dark. Lord, may we lift up your name in our hearts, in our families, in our communities, and in our church, and even in our nation as a whole, may we come to you in humility and walk humbly with you loving justice, 
doing justice and loving mercy. Lord, we pray all of these things in the name of the one who came into a violent and dark world and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us give thanks that God is with us, that God will never abandon us, and let us sing of the amazing work that Jesus does among us through I Danced in the Morning. and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, now and always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.